and welcome again to Optics. We have to start this course introducing geometrical optics. This is a description of light as propagating in rays, in straight lines. This is highly practical when we consider that the wavelength of light is negligible in comparison with the objects that it encounters. And also when we are using thin lenses. The wavelength of visible light ranges from about 400 nanometers to about 750 nanometers. So this geometrical optics is good to study visible light with ordinary objects. The first thing we want to consider is the law of reflection. When a ray of light traveling on a medium strikes on a surface of a different medium, it can be reflected at the interface that separates both media. The law of reflection states that the angle of reflection is the same as the angle of incidence. Both rays, incoming and outgoing, are on the same plane, and that plane is perpendicular to the interface. The second aspect of ray optics we want to consider is the law of refraction, also known as Snell's law after Wilbur Snellius. Consider a ray that, again, strikes at the interface between two media. If neither media is opaque, then the ray will experience refraction. It will travel inside the second medium. The incident and refracted angles satisfy the following equation. n1 sine of theta1 is equal to n2 sine of theta2, where n1 and n2 are the refractive index of its media and theta1 and 2 are the corresponding angles. All these angles are with respect to the normal of the interface between both media. In general, the light ray will be partially reflected and partially refracted. Well, this is the ray description of reflection and refraction, but we can also explain it in terms of waves through Huygens' principle. Christian Huygens thought that light could be described as a series of pulses emitted from all the points of the light source. Then, as pulses, after a time, you could draw a circle a new pulse with center in the emitting point, being that circular corresponding waveform of that point. If you do that for all emitting points and you join the tangent to all those individual wavefronts, you have the wavefront of the source of light. Then you do this again and again as light propagates. Each point in the wavefront is a new source of light the center of a new circle, a new poles. Huygens made some considerations. For example, he did not consider the whole circle or the sphere if it's in 3D, as that would be light traveling backwards. He only considered half of the circle. This way, he could explain light propagation on a straight source of light, or a spherical source of light, such as a light bulb. He also explained what happened when light enters a slit. The obstacles at the sides block part of the small wavefronts. Although he avoided the part of circle leaving the region out of the straight line from the original source to the obstacle. He did this to explain better the sa shadows. To explain the law of reflection, Huygens considered the wavefronts. Assume that the source is far, so those wavefronts come as parallel lines which are perpendicular to what would be the rays of light. If there was no interface, then all wavefronts would move forward and the rays would continue the original path. Because the wavefronts come at an angle, ray 1 reaches the interface before ray 2 and before ray 3. Consider the points of contact of the rays with the interface. Following Huygens' principle, those points will be the new source of the wavelets. While ray 2 still travels towards the interface, the wavefront from point A reaches this distance. 
Once RAID 2 reaches the interface, that will be the center of a new wavelet. And the same happens when RAID 3 reaches the interface. If we follow the circle of each of these points, it happens that we obtain a plane wavefront again. If we compare the trajectories of light with our interface below and the reflected trajectories above, with a little of trigonometry we can see that the incident angle theta sub 1 is equal to the reflected angle theta sub 2. We can now follow the same thought process to explain the law of refraction with Huygens' principle. Let's have a look at this scheme, where we have again three rays going to an interface. This time, light will go into the second medium. Here, the key point is the fact that light travels at a different speed in the second medium. Let's assume it goes from air to water, from a faster medium to a slower medium. We focus on the points of the interface a, B, and C. We draw semicircles into the second medium and we need to find the tangent to the wavefront at the same moment of time, of course. With dashed lines, I draw what would happen if there was no second medium. Remember that light travels faster in the first medium. So the same happens for the dashed lines, which should be longer than the solid lines inside of the second medium. For example, the solid lines inside water medium would be just 75% as long as the dashed ones. Once we join the semicircles with the tangent, we find that the trajectories change direction when entering the second medium. Now we need to find the relationship between the angles for that, we need some geometry and trigonometry. First, let me define the index of refraction as the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum versus the speed of light in the medium, n equal to c over v, where v is the speed of light in that medium. m is the point at which light arrives traveling in water, and g the point it would reach if instead of water the medium was air. So the segment AM is the distance traveled by light, which is equal to VT, while the segment DG is the distance that light would have traveled at speed C. So the distance AM can be written as V sub 2T, where V sub 2 is the speed of light in medium 2. But because the distance AG is the distance traveled in the same amount of time in medium 1, if I rewrite V sub 1 as C over N sub 1, Now we need to write AM and AG in terms of the incident angle theta1 and the refracted angle theta2. The angle theta2 is the angle between segments AC and CM. While the angle theta1 is the angle between the segments AC and AF. Using the definition of sine of theta 1 and 2, we write sine of theta 1 equal to fc over ac and sine of theta 2 as am over ac. If we divide both expressions, we get fc over am. But because fc is the same length of, as ag, then comparing with the previous result, We can write that AG over AM is N2 over N1, which is the same as Snell's 
Law of Refraction. 